Don't abandon what's working. Whenever I think about pivoting and evolution and getting to where you want to go, I think a lot of times we are so quick to just like abandon everything, right? Like we're like, I have this new idea, this new passion, this new business I want to do. We just want to like toss everything out that we've decided we no longer want. And I don't want for you to abandon what's already working. I want you to leverage it and then start slowly evolving. So before we go into creating anything, whether it's a blog post or writing an email or even a podcast episode, we say, what is the goal of this piece of content? How will I measure it? This is the Gold Digger Podcast. So the first place to begin, if you are on the cusp of this evolution or transition or pivot, is you have to get really honest about what is your mission statement. In fact, you probably should rewrite it. Now, a lot of people skip this step when they're building out a business. They don't have a plan. They're not really thinking big picture. But when we're talking about a mission statement, what it really is, is this very solidified vision of what it is that you do, who you serve, and how you do it. So if you've never written a mission statement, even if you're not on the cusp of a pivot or this evolution, please, please, after you listen to this episode, take the time to answer these questions so you can get crystal clear. This is a great exercise if you're someone who doesn't know how to answer the question, like, what do you do very succinctly? So here are some questions for you. What is my core purpose? Who is it that I'm going to serve? And what are my guiding values? So how am I going to do it? So it's what, who, and how. If you can get that down to a concise sentence, that is your mission statement. And a lot of times when brands go through this evolution, they don't take time to start right with the why, right? The what, the who, the how, and the why. And that can really tether you and anchor you in as you start to experience maybe growing pains or you're kind of feeling that disconnection as you're starting to pivot and change. So example, my mission has changed and pivoted a ton over the years from being a wedding photographer to teaching other photographers to serving small business owners to helping women wake up to their lives. I feel like my brand is only going to continue to evolve. And now I like welcome and usher in that evolution with open arms. I keep pivoting. I keep evolving. And I want to stay aligned with my values every single time. And so often it just looks like a very small redirection or course correction and maybe just pointing slightly in a different direction. I recently had this experience where I actually got really quiet with myself. This is something that's very hard for me to do, something that I wanted to get better at. And so I got really quiet with myself and I came to this conclusion that what I ultimately want in this stage of business and what I want my mission to be is for others to experience peace, just peace in the pursuit, peace in their lives, peace in their businesses, feeling that level of contentedness that I recognize that so many achievers and strivers and high performers never allow themselves to feel. For me personally, entrepreneurship has unlocked this feeling of freedom and peace and ease in my life. And my mission today, like what I want my mission to be is like, how can we help other people wake up to the reality of their lives, but also to pursue and experience more peace. And it's really interesting because when I got quiet with myself and kind of like unpacked all of that, my first thought was, I don't want to have to market peace. Like peace is not something you should put a price tag on. And so I came to this conclusion that in order for me to really embody this mission, I have to embody peace. I want it to be something people experience when they experience me, when they hear my voice, when they take a program. Like I want that to just be so deeply woven in. And so the first place you want to start is getting really clear on your mission statement. Again, it's what is my core purpose? Who is it that I'm serving and what am I going to serve with or through or by? So again, it's the what, the who, and the how. And then again, if you want to get even deeper, like seven levels deep, go to the why. Because I feel like if you're really going to follow through on this evolution, you have to have a really strong why that you feel so compelled about in order to make that pivot. So the next thing that I want for you to do 
is to do a full audit of your public facing content and make sure that it's still relevant. Now, a lot of times when brands evolve and pivot, it's not like you're like scrapping every single thing and starting fresh. Sometimes it is that, but most of the time it is a slight redirection or course correction. So what I want for you to do is to create this comprehensive list of all of your brand assets, including things like logos, taglines, color schemes, typography, marketing materials, and digit assets. Now, oops, sorry and digital assets. And again, a brand is so much more than those things. But a lot of times when we're doing this public facing inventory, that's where we want to start. So you want to kind of start as to like your website, your blog, your social media platforms, any platforms you create on your podcast, your YouTube. I personally, whenever I do an audit like this, I always start at the hub of my brand, which is my website. And generally speaking, I do an audit every like six months to just make sure everything is still in alignment. But I also do kind of a refresh every year. And so that kind of welcomes that evolution, that next phase. And so I love to do this refresh after the audit where I'm looking at things like copy, photos, offers, timing. And again, most of the time it's not this full, like start from the ground up, gut the whole thing overhaul, but more so just freshening up the vibe, the energy, the design. One thing that I love is that my website is based on a template. So it's actually really easy. It's not this huge months and months and months long project for me to like add pages or update the vibe or change out the colors or the fonts or the images because we're working off of a template. So if you want to check out the template that I use for my website, go to jennacutcher.com forward slash tonic. That's T O N I C. It's jennacutcher.com forward slash tonic. These are the templates made by my web designer. And my website currently is based off of one of these templates. So when I recently did an audit, I caught a few things that I was like, oh, wow, that's no longer in alignment. So I used to have like on my website, like talking about margaritas and things. And like, I have not had a drink in well over a year. So we removed all alcohol references. I went through and removed photos of my kids' faces because we haven't shared them in months. And we made that decision moving forward to not share their faces on our content. I updated some of my favorite things. I shifted out my top performing blog posts to put more current top performing blog posts. I updated my about me section. We have this fun timeline on my about me section. So we updated that. We updated my team section and their images on the website. So again, it's just a refresh, a redirection, making sure that that initial feeling that somebody gets when they land on your content, whether it's your website, your blog, your social, it is all in alignment with this new or redefined mission that you started with. The next thing that I want for you to think about is evaluating your content pillars. And so I have shared this strategy so many times on this podcast, but I'll quickly review it. So I have this strategy that I've been teaching for years. It's been written about in marketing books. It's called the JK5 strategy. Essentially what it is, is it allows you to build a true brand, a true recognizable brand, that personality behind what it is that you're selling. So the JK five strategy means that you have five different content pillars and you are using those pillars to share different content on your platforms, meaning that you are giving someone a reason to follow you, even if they are currently not on the market or even aware of what it is that you sell. So many times business owners create their business and then they create an account and all they do is talk about what they sell. And it gives people no reason to follow them if they aren't even aware that they need this thing or if they don't want it. I discovered this very early on as a wedding photographer where I realized if I only post wedding content, I am only attracting people that likely only need my services once when they get married in a very small area in Wisconsin who are planning a wedding in the next year and need a wedding photographer. That is such a niche audience. And so when you do the JK5, it means that you have five different content pillars and only one of them is what you sell. So for me, some of the different topics I've shared about over the years, uh, macaroni and cheese, puppies, yoga pants, home decor, health and fitness, motherhood, miscarriage, 
body image, marriage. I've shared about so many different content pillars and my content pillars evolve as I evolve. Whatever I'm excited about in this stage of life is what I want my content pillars to be. So I want for you to think about what things can I talk about other than what I sell that will allow me to connect with my ideal audience, to build that know, like, and trust factor, and to ensure that what I am building is a true brand and not just a business. A brand allows you to pivot and evolve. So this is why this is so important. So I want for you to evaluate your content pillars if you already have them or redefine what they are going to be. And again, if you don't really know, one exercise that's super easy to do is to scroll through your camera roll on your phone and notice what you are naturally taking photos of. Maybe it's food, maybe it's books you read, maybe it's fashion, maybe it's home decor, maybe it's your workouts, like whatever that is, that's likely gonna kind of help signify a brand pillar. Another exercise that can help with this is to imagine if you had a magazine, what sort of topics would you cover in that? That magazine, right? Like no one's going to buy a magazine that is only about one thing and only has articles on this one thing. And so what would you want inside of your magazine and how would you cover just different categories that would bring people in and connect with them without feeling like you're constantly selling? And so for me, I've had to shift my content pillars as different stages and seasons of my life have shifted. And I constantly love to evaluate like, are these still fitting? Is this still exciting to me? Do I still love sharing about this? Am I still creating that deep level of connection that I want to on these different specific pillars of my life? And I also love it too, because it just puts you more in a position to serve people without always selling. And so that is the next step. After you've adjusted your content pillars, I want for you to look at your content strategy. So inside of your inventory that you are going to do, it's like forensic style inventory. As you start to peel back the layers of what you are doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it. I want for you to look at your current publishing strategy schedule and where it is that you're publishing. So what platforms are you showing up on and see if there's any room for you to start shifting your content or shifting to a newer strategy. Maybe there's something that you've just always done and you're kind of sick of doing it, or it's not actually yielding results. Or maybe there's something that you've wanted to try, like you've wanted to try a podcast or you've wanted to do more Instagram lives or whatever that looks like. Do a little evaluation. What content is exciting to you? What do you love creating? How can you create more intentionally? Are there ways that you can use the content that you're already creating in different places? One tip here, with this whole episode, but also with this piece of it, the content strategy, don't abandon what's working. Whenever I think about pivoting and evolution and getting to where you want to go, I think a lot of times we are so quick to just like abandon everything, right? Like we're like, I have this new idea, this new passion, this new business I want to do. We just want to like toss everything out that we've decided we no longer want. And I don't want for you to abandon what's already working. I want you to leverage it and then start slowly evolving. So for example, if you are going to go in a new direction, maybe you've already been using the JK5 strategy in your business. Maybe you just take out one of the pillars that isn't resonating as well and insert in the evolved pillar of where you want to go so that you're still kind of sharing what people are already enjoying, what they know you for, but you're starting to change the conversation thoughtfully. So again, don't throw out what is working. Use it as leverage to get to where you want to go. So in your inventory, look at what you are doing and try to connect every piece of your content strategy with a real measurable result. That will help guide your decisions more than just being like, oh, this content performs well. It gets a lot of likes and comments. But if you're not actually tying that to a real result, it can make that content creation process really challenging and also just really annoying. And so look at that content strategy. That's something we've been doing a lot this year. We've been working with a measurement marketing team so that we can see every single effort and the result it yields. So before we go into creating anything, whether it's a blog post or writing an email or even a podcast episode, we say, what is the goal of this piece of content? How will I measure it? And then afterwards, it allows us to say, okay, one week from now, 30 days from now, 60, 90 days out, did it do what it was intended to do? If it's yes, awesome, keep going on it. If it's no, do we want to optimize it or do we want to scrap it? What does that look like? And so again, you want to invite data, insight, numbers into this conversation as you start to look at your content. Next, speaking of data and insights, sit down with your numbers and start to evaluate what offers you have and where you want them to go. Keep in mind here, being a business owner is not as complicated as we make it out to be. 
To be a business, you need to have an offer, which could be a product, a service, or some sort of digital item, and you need to exchange it for currency, whatever that looks like. And so you want to evaluate your offers and figure out, do I want to go deeper on them? Do I want to evolve them? Do I want to scrap them and let them go? You want to get really crystal clear on, are these going to change or are these still working? Are these something I want to leverage as I move forward or do I want to let go? And I think that's a really good question. And so as you start to kind of dive deeper into this explorative phase, you want to think about what lights you up, what type of work excites you, what makes you groan, what work makes you not look forward to the day. What offers are generating the most revenue for you? What offers are underperforming? Are there any new offers you want to create? Are there any offers you want to stop selling? One thing that I think is really important in this process is entering it both from that like feminine standpoint of like energetically, but also the masculine standpoint of like financially, right? Like having a mix of both of those things of like, okay, this one offer is generating 90% of our income. How can we maybe go deeper or get that into alignment versus letting that go? And maybe this one is getting 10%. Do we want to optimize it or do we want to just like scrap it? And so again, this year doing all of the measurement stuff and really understanding what is driving our results, what is driving our revenue has helped me have more informed decisions around what do we want to go deeper on and what do we want to let go of? And I think that so often entrepreneurs, because we're so multi-passionate, because we love creating, we love the art of creation, we often try to go wider instead of going deeper. And so we start to create more offers and we're not actually really evaluating Pareto's principle, which says that usually speaking, 80 to 90% of your results comes from 10 to 20% of your work. So I always imagine like if entrepreneurs got really serious about knowing their numbers and knowing, oh my gosh, this one offer is generating 80 to 90% of my, my results. How do I go deeper on that? We would have a lot more peace and contentedness in our life and our business because we weren't always creating new things and launching new things and not actually knowing like what our efforts are leading to in terms of results. I recently did an annual planning session with one of my team members, Marissa, who's like my right hand. And I started asking people in my life and also in my business, like our accountants and our measurement team and the people doing our automation. I was like, hey, if you were me and you were planning out your next year, what things would you look at? Like, what have you noticed in your area of this business in terms of trends? What's working really well? What maybe isn't working well? And gathering all of that insight to bring into consideration as we start to plan out. And so with an evolution, again, I don't want it to just be like a night and day, like all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm changing. Here's the thing. Turn off the light switch on the thing that's been working and turn on the light switch on this brand new thing. I want for you to take what has worked for you, leverage it and start to move forward with informed decisions. And so this year, instead of just kind of mapping out the year like we've done in the past where we're just like, well, this is just what we do and this is why we do it. We're actually bringing in data and insight and saying, okay, this is helping us inform where we want to focus and what we want to do. And how do we make sure that these efforts are in alignment with the new vision and mission that we have? Okay. This next one is a really big one and I want to kind of go a little bit deep on it. So if you are in a place of pivot, one of my biggest recommendations is to book a brand photo shoot and capture the new energy, the new you, the new style. Now, believe it or not, I have done a million photo sessions in this season of life. The most photos I do are family photos because my kids are growing like weeds. But believe it or not, I have never intentionally done like this is for my brand. This is for my website, for my arsenal, for my content, for my ads, like a very specific booked brand shoot. We've done things where like after our family photos, I'm like, can you take like five pictures of me in my office? But this is something I think so many entrepreneurs would benefit from, especially if you are in a season of evolution or shift or change. I hired my friend Jordan Quinn. So she 
is someone I met literally years ago. Her and I met years ago. We like clicked. We also had almost the same exact due date with our firstborn children. So we like bonded over pregnancy. And she had recently done a photo shoot for my web designers. And it was so funny because I had posted up an Instagram story of like, does anyone have any favorite brand photos or favorite brand photographers? And both of my web designers reached out without prompt and said, you have to hire Jordan. And so they sent me all these images. And I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. And so she got in touch. And I was like, why did I not think of you? So something that was so different about this. One thing that I love about this idea is, yes, it is an investment, but you can get so much content in just one shoot. So I took this very seriously. Jordan had to fly in from Colorado. She flies all across the country to do this. And I was like, okay, I'm going to maximize every minute of our time together. We're going to have a plan. So I made a Pinterest board of inspiration, really trying to nail down, okay, these are the textures I like. This is the mood I like. This is the backdrop I like. This is the type of clothing I like. And I shared it with Jordan. And then I worked out my outfits. So I kind of had the Pinterest inspiration. Then I figured out, okay, what type of outfits do I want? Most of the pieces I already had in my closet because I wanted it to like feel like me in my everyday life. And then I also rented a bunch of items from Newly. Newly is a clothing service rental that I've done for about a year. Every single month, you get six different pieces. You can send them back in. It's kind of like Rent the Runway, but more for like everyday clothes. They have like free people and um, anthropology and just like different brands that you would wear every day. And what I love about it is you can kind of pick riskier pieces or pieces that you wouldn't naturally want to buy or pieces that you maybe want to use once or twice and then you want to send them back. I love that it's like eco-friendly, but I also love that it kind of lets you explore different things. Like a lot of times I'm introducing more color into my life and so I'll use Newly to get really colorful things and then I decide, okay, do I like this or do I not? So I took what was already in my closet did newly. And then I bought like two different pieces from Amazon for my photo shoot. And I like loved the process of planning it all out. I hung everything up in my laundry room. Jordan flew in. She actually spent the night at my house because we're friends. And we were able to like nail down. These are the outfits. These are the looks. This is the order we want to do them in. And then she even like set out what jewelry went with what outfit. So like I literally was like, okay, outfit one, I'm going to wear this. And then I'd go up and change and put on the new jewelry. And it was just just so nice. Now I have done so many different photos and I've never worked with someone like Jordan because she told me like exactly what to do. Like I would get dressed and I would come down and she's like, you're going to sit here. You need your laptop here. This is the vibe. This is the energy. Get it, get it, get it done. And what I loved is, is that she would set a timer. So like we were only in each outfit for like five minutes. It was very quickly moving, but in a good way. There are so many shoots that I've done where like the photographer doesn't provide a lot of direction and that's totally cool. That's like a totally different style of photography. But I feel like with brand photos, you are on a mission to get as much content as you can get in a certain amount of time and to have so much diversity in poses, outfits, vibes, backdrops, like all these things. And so it was so nice to work with someone who is literally like, sit there, do this, do that, move this. Okay, now go get dressed. So I loved it. Also, I should say, so many of you are obsessed with my brand photos. I have to tell you, it was the darkest, rainiest day of all time. Jordan was literally in town for one day. So it's not like we could just be like, oh, we'll do it tomorrow. The next day, of course, was sunny. I am a photographer. So I am like looking out the window, like panicking as I'm getting my hair and makeup done. I'm like, it is so dark. We have so many windows in our house. It was still so dark. And so what Jordan pulled off was basically a miracle. Uh, I love doing a brand shoot because I think it ushers in this new version of you. It gives you that fresh content. It allows you to kind of reintroduce yourself, which is something I've been doing with those images. And then also you have beautiful images to use everywhere. So we're using these images for my website, for my blog posts, for my podcast episodes, for my freebies, for my ads, for landing pages, like basically anywhere that you see a photo of me, we are now inserting in these new photos. We have enough to use for the entire year. And so I love that. One other thing that Jordan did that I think is really cool, and I'm going to share how you can experience this too, if you want to hire her, because she's insane and amazing, is that she shot video clips for me as an extra service. And so after the shoot, I got like 10 professional video clips that I've been able to use for Instagram reels, for ads, for just like motion in my things, for gifts in my emails. And so I love this. So I asked her, I was like, okay, I'm going to be talking about you on the podcast. 
I'm going to sing your praises so much. Everyone's going to want to book you like you need to work with her. So if you go to jordanquinnphoto.com, you can book a session. Just tell her that you heard about her from me and she will throw in 10 video clips free when you do a brand shoot. So you'll get all your images. Plus you'll get these 10 professional video clips that you can use on your website for ads for basically anything. She's so amazing. Like I am already waiting to work with her again, but this is a huge recommendation. And maybe I can do a whole episode on getting the most out of your brand shoot. But I just think there is so much power. And of course, I'm a former photographer, so I love photos. But I think so many people don't actually take advantage of this piece of the transformation. And so they're trying to take this old version of themselves that doesn't even feel like them anymore into this new direction. And you can just feel that disconnect. So if you can splurge for a brand shoot, this is your invitation. Hire Jordan Quinn. Again, that's jordanquinnphoto.com. I'll link it in the show notes and show description and just mention my name and you will get 10 free video clips. Trust me, I'm getting so much mileage out of what she sent. Okay. Now that we've kind of talked about all the different ways that you can change the visual aspect of your brand with this evolution, you want to create a brand standards guide. So this is basically a guide that includes all the guidelines for your new brand identity. So you want to talk about logo usage, color codes, typography, tone of voice. This guide will help maintain consistency for you during and after the rebrand. This is something that we created years and years and years ago. I have a template for it in shopjennacutcher.com because I just think it's a powerful tool for you to rely on to make sure that everything is cohesive. I just think cohesion and consistency are often overlooked when it comes to branding, but we actually just made ours way more robust recently. It's super helpful to have something like this so that if your team expands or you hire contractors, you can send it off to them. So you're saying like, this is how I greet people. This is something I would never say. These are the top emojis I use. This is uh, the type of content I share. These are the images, the quotes that I use. This is the typography that I use in these certain places. This is a treatment of the typography. This is the colors that we use. And so we had our graphic designer design this beautiful, beautiful guide um, that now we have internally so that we can figure out how we format everything and how to create. But then also we can send externally to anyone that's working on our brand or business that is outside of our organization. So having that, whether it's just for you, where you organize, okay, these are the new brand colors. These are the fonts. This is the logo. This is the vibe and energy. This is the inspiration that can be really helpful, but also um, you can be building it out for future use, however you need to. So after you kind of go through all of these things, the audit, maybe you get fresh images, maybe you create this new brand identity, you want to think about how you can start to evolve in a way that helps people to see where you're going, not where you've been. So when I was a photographer, there was this quote that we always said about our websites where it said, show the kind of work you want to shoot. AKA, if you're in a position and you're taking photos and you're not feeling inspired or you want to kind of get out of that vibe, you don't want to fill your website with all of that kind of work because that's the kind of work you're going to continue to book. So show what you want to shoot translates into this way of like, show the kind of work that you want to do, show that vibe on your website, make that the focus, not where you've been, but where you're going. So you want to point people in this new direction And you want to make sure that all of this that we've talked about today aligns and helps usher in this new mission, this new vision. So again, looking at things like your bio photo, your cover images, your ad images, your website, your courses, your downloads. There are so many different places that you can just kind of inject this new energy, these new images, this new personality. And honestly, it just feels so good to have like that fresh energy coming in, even if you're not doing a big pivot, just to have like this is me right now. Like I've, I changed from even a year ago. It might be subtle, but I can feel it. And when I can feel it, I connect with it on a different level. The last thing that I want to say is I want for you to invite people into the evolution. Let them watch you change, right? Think of three different ways you can help illustrate the shift, whether it's through images, whether it's through words, content, or a brand pillar. You want to invite people in on this journey. And I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is that a lot of times when they're going through this evolution, they do this like full stop 
where like, that's the old me, this is the new me, take it or leave it. And I just don't think that it's necessary and I don't think that it works. In order to pivot, you want to invite people into the process. Do not be afraid to show that you're beginning at something. Do not be afraid to show that you don't have it all figured out. In fact, I think it is way more relatable when you show up and you're like, hey, I'm feeling this new call, I'm moving in this new direction, I don't really know what it's gonna look like, but come with me because then people feel a part of your transformation. They feel invited to do this. I think I did this really well when I announced my book because I'd never written a book before. I had never been an author before. And so people had six months of following me through this journey of writing and the copy edits and doing the interviews and launching and finding my book in stores. And like they were literally on the journey with me, which made them so much more impacted by it. So invite people into the evolution, express it, encourage it, inspire people through it. Don't be afraid to say like, hey, I've changed my mind or I've evolved or this is who I was and this is where I'm now going. Clearly communicating a shift and inviting people to be a part of it is a great way to maintain that trust and that buy-in throughout your evolution process. Now, remember, a brand evolution is not just about changing what things look like. It's about changing the way your brand makes people feel. It is aligning every aspect of your business with this new vision and ensuring that it is very clear and it is intentional as you pivot and change. Not too long ago, I interviewed Rory Vaden on the Gold Digger podcast, and he is a branding expert, and he shared the tenets of what makes a brand stand out. So if you have not listened to that episode yet, I'm linking it in today's show notes. Go back to that show. That show is so powerful, and it helps you believe that, like, yes, I can build a true and recognizable brand. And if you're interested in and learning more about building a brand that will evolve with you, hop onto Instagram, send me a DM with the word brand. That's B-R-A-N-D. Just send me a DM. I will send you info about how to get in touch with Rory and his team. They have helped hundreds of gold diggers redefine what their brand is or get really clear on what their mission is absolutely free. So again, just hop onto Instagram, DM me the word brand. I'll connect you with Rory's team. It's an amazing way to gain clarity as you move through a pivot or as you start something fresh. Between the tips that I just shared and Rory's insights, I sincerely hope that you feel equipped and excited to successfully evolve your brand as you change, as your business change, as your mission changes. You are always growing. You're not meant to stay in the same place forever. You're not meant to be the same person forever. So please let this episode remind you that it's okay to change and evolve. And it's also great to bring your audience along for the journey. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. And thank you so much for listening to another episode of the podcast. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you have a quick second, take a second, make sure you're subscribed to my show. And if you love today's marketing tips, tricks, strategies, and life talk, then check out this episode. You are going to love it. So I was recently at a mastermind and we were on the closing day sharing our closing thoughts. And my friend Jim Quick was sitting right next to me and he said something so poignant. The topic was comfort zones. And essentially what he said is that there are two types of hard that nearly everyone is experiencing. The hardness that comes when you're stuck inside of your comfort zone, but also the hard that comes when you're trying to break away from it.